Before inserting the rushes, each one is flattened uniformly. Brushes complete, she fits them to the mold. As each weft rush is inserted, it is pressed down firmly and great care is taken to get uniform tension in the weave. As in woolen weaving, different patterns can be produced. The base of this basket is a plain check or tabby weave. Twill weave, where the pattern of over two and under two is used, is also popular with rush weavers. Near the edge of the base, Mrs. Brennan is pairing or working two thin rushes alternately over and under each other. This row of finer rushes binds together the looser weave of the base of the basket before a twisted edge of large rushes is added. This twisted edge forms a type of small plinth on which the basket will sit, and it is with this edge that the rushes are twisted up the sides of the basket. This basket has an open work panel and Mrs. Brennan is just defining its edge with a row of coupling. The open work panel is similar to that seen on so many willow baskets. There its function is to reduce the weight of the basket, but here it is purely decorative. Above the open work there is a band of high plait, which because it is not secure in itself must be followed by a band which will form a firm rim. The rim is made with a three-rod edge of large rushes. The basket is finished with an old packing needle, which is used to fasten the last rushes by drawing them back through the thick rim. Mrs. Brennan finally trims the waist ends off the projecting rushes. No sophisticated tools are needed for this work. As with so many crafts, the skill of the hands makes the task seem deceptively simple. In a short period, the ladies of the Sleeve Bond Cooperative have developed a talent of which they can feel justifiably proud. The variety of their products is impressive, and their market success 
shows that there is still scope in this technological age for goods that can only be produced with skill, care and patience. Sleeve bond exports to America, Europe and Australia. Only highly skilled weavers are accepted as suppliers and every supplier is a shareholder holding at least two one pound shares. The process which began at Saints Island ends for the weavers with delivery to the handcraft shop. The products show how the adaptable nature of the rushes places few restrictions on the creative talents of the imaginative rush worker. The future of this traditional craft seems assured. It is a delight to see it being preserved, not as an archaic curiosity, but as a viable commercial enterprise in its own right.